Hello and welcome to the NBS show, episode number 250. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Twilight Genesis. Hey, you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? No. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm doing great. Yourself, Norman? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Like, this is 250? We, 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 we've done this for 250 episodes now. Like, 250 weeks. Like, what? <laughs> That's uh, a big number. I know. Nice, round, even. I know, and next week when we record this, it's going to be our fifth year of doing this. So it's like, what? Two big celebratory podcasts in a week from each other. I know, it's like, what? <laughs> you got to have your work cut out for you. Yeah, indeed. And the funny thing about this episode, like... By the time you hear this, this is not going to be on a Tuesday, but instead it's going to be on a Thursday. The reason for that is we recorded the discussion show on an earlier date and it's about love. And what is Tuesday? If you can check your calendar real fast. Oh God, no. Oh no, not that day. Yep. <laughs> so... Oh. So finally, we're releasing part two of the Crystal Empire discussion and mostly focusing on Cadence. So yay! We, well, technically, if I say we're looking forward for that one, it's not really legit because it's already out. But yeah, uh, reason for that is because yay, uh, Valentine's Day, love. So yeah, this is coming a few days later. So yeah. <laughs> But still, uh, news is still news, even though if it's a few days old, um, the most important part is the personality talking about the news. Isn't that true? Very, very true. I know some of this news is quite exciting. A lot of people down here have gotten a bit hyped for it. <laughs> yep, yep. And well, let's start off slowly and escalate our way to the top. So, first thing on the news is Tale of Equestria, now listed on Amazon. So, we've been talking about this tabletop RPG for a while now and well I'm excited for this because I've played a few games of Pathfinders in my life and I really enjoyed it and what about you uh, Twy what have you played have you played it before uh, I've played uh, Pathfinder I currently play 5th edition D&D where I'm a player in one group and a GM for another so I'm, I'm really hyped for this yeah so we're really excited because this book is going to be, well, the site gives a March 3rd release date, but shipping actually listed for April 5th to 3rd on Amazon. But hey, if you go to a brick and mortar store, you're going to get it right on the spot. So we've seen a few things about said book, and I'm not sure what the system they're running on, because I know that they're not running on a D20 system, but probably its own. Probably it's a D20, but it's not similar to what D&D is using. Huh. Yeah, the closest thing that, from having looked at the uh, character sheets from a few weeks ago, I think it's closer to the Cypher system, which uses a D20, I think, or a D12, I forget, which is quite different from your regular D&D D20 uh, system. Mm, true, true. But still, it's one of those games where it'll be fun to play. Um, for now, this is just the base game, I think. They're not releasing the expansion yet and the bestiary, which both are really important for any game master to own. Because, well, more expansion, more stories, bestiary, more meaning, more creatures to your um, creature pool. So that's always fun. I can't wait. If I wasn't poor, I would definitely put this on my shopping list immediately. Uh, I, I wish I could just get it. Like, Amazon, I, I don't know if it sends to my location, but hey, if it does, awesome. If it doesn't, eh, well, I'll probably look it up at a store nearby, probably. Who knows? So, we mentioned April, and you know what's coming on in April, too? Oh, yes, I do. I'm so excited for it. Yeah. And everybody is going wild. Everybody is going gaga over this. And what's coming out in April is Season 7. So, Friendship is Magic is coming in April. So, we for a while now, and an April release for Season 7 is quite okay. 
um, in fact, it's really exciting. What would they tell? What's the going to be the first two episodes? Oh, it's so much fun. Oh, I can't wait. I know down here we're going to throw a big party for it. Nice. Well, I, I think what spurred this news was someone asking Discovery Family on the Twitters about, uh, what you going to call this? Let me double check. Uh, Happy New Year. Thanks for the Pony Marathon. It means a lot to me. And all of us Ronies and LMP fans, please keep airing LMP. I don't know what I would do if it was ever gone. Thanks and Happy New Year's. Uh, and he also asked, when is MLP Season 7 starts? Um, Discovery Family replied, Season 7 is coming in April. Stay tuned for more info. So, cool. <laughs> now, let's just hope that they don't jump it forward again. That took us all by surprise last year when it was supposed to come in May and then they forwarded it <laughs> to the end of March. Uh, well, at least an early release is good. But, you know, some people, when they keep their promises, they keep their promises to a T, uh, especially Capcom, when they said that, oh, we release a new character in February. And they release it on February 28th. That's technically the end of February coming to March. It's like, okay, it's basically, we can just wait till next month. Jerks. Oh, yeah. That's always fun, fun, fun for the family. <laughs> yep. But still, Season 7 is going to be in April. If it comes earlier, no problem. If it comes on April 31st. April, April... No, April only has 30. So April 30th, that'll be... Uh, you kept your promise, but it was a really, really evil promise. Mm. Yeah, they, they technically didn't lie to us. <laughs> yeah, it, technically, they did release it in April. <laughs> uh, but yeah, honestly, um, if it does air in April, it's going to be on a Saturday. So that will be on the 29th. If they do keep their promise like that. But nah, nah, let, let's hope not. Probably it'll be around the 15th or the 8th. That's my guesstimate. Yeah, I'd say probably around mid uh, mid of the month as well. Seems about right. So, yeah, can't wait. I don't know what to say because Season 7 is awesome and I am afraid that most of the reviewers out there are going into a panic. Again. Yeah, aren't half of them still behind in reviewing Season 6? Yeah, yeah, I I know a few. I know a few. I work with a few. (laughs) Yes, I believe Silver Quill, last I checked, might still be behind on reviewing Season (laughs) 5. He's a busy guy. I put him in the dungeon for a reason. That's probably why he can't make his videos on time. <laughs> I'm sorry. But you know what? The dungeon is a fun place. Uh, it's where people come together around and never be released. Yeah. But you know what's lacking in the dungeon? I don't know, Norman. What's lacking in the dungeon? Food. You always have more food. Yep. And you know what? Um, apparently, a store called 25 Degrees is selling... The Rainbow Dash Burger. If you ever wanted to eat your favorite horse <laughs> as a burger without actually eating a horse, this is the best way to do yep. it. <laughs> uh, so, a restaurant in Thailand called 25 Degrees has the Rainbow Dash Burger on the menu. And I got no idea what to say about this one. Um, well, from what I can say right now, um, the burger is a promotional item only. Uh, starting from February 9th to the 16th, it boasts that double kisses the love of the love season with our ingredient fun and gourmet rainbow dash burger served with two seasonal cupcakes and a bottle of smooth pink milk. All for just 450 Thai baht. So yeah, uh, let's see. Um, by the looks of it, it could be they have I got no idea what the ingredients is. Like, I see cheese. I'm not sure if that's carrots or and cucumber. But the bun's rainbow. Yeah, the bun is rainbow. But in, in this picture, the promotional art, the bun looks like it's made out of wood. <laughs> but I, I can see what uh, looks like some onion and stuff. I don't think that's uh, onion. Maybe shredded carrot underneath. Oh, yeah, underneath. Underneath yeah, yeah. The, the, the patty. Yeah. So, um... I, As a person who likes burgers, from my point of view, this looks like your standard, you know, run-of-the-mill burgers, really nice. The gimmick here is just the buns. The ingredients is uh, cabbages and, you know, those standard stuff that you put on the burgers, like for vegetables and whatnot. 
yeah. And with every purchase, you get a bottle of pink milk and two cupcakes. So yay. Uh, the person on PR who's doing this really knows MLP because bronies like the cupcakes. I thought muffins. But still, it's sweet confetti dessert. Yay. Yeah, I, I'd love to have one. Unfortunately, I don't get to Bangkok until see Ponycon, yeah. which is in August. Yeah. These are that actually that'd be great. That'd be a smart move if they brought this burger back Ooh. when Sea Ponycon happens. Yeah, I mean, if they're smart enough, they'll probably bring it back. But I don't know how the reception for this one is because we're not local there, and I honestly don't know if. This is going to be very popular for the locals because, you know, certain gimmick food like this is based on, um, certain locations. But, ah, uh, well, in- enough about food. Let's throw money at something else. I know what I want to throw money at. And what would that be? Plushies. Oh, yeah. But I'm, but I'm poor, but there is cheap ones now. Yeah, but here's, here's a deal. Here's, here is a great deal for you, my friend. So, do you have $35? American dollars, there is. Well, I've got 35 Australian dollars, but I reckon I could stretch. <laughs> Good enough! Because for the price of $35, you can get, you can get not one, but two Billabella plushies. Technically, that covers everything, but since we're a pony show, we're just going to talk all about the ponies. So, uh, Billabella is doing a promotion right now. Everything in their store, uh, until Valentine's Day, where you can get pony plush and Teddy bears and whatnot at Billa Bear for, for 35 bucks for two. So yay, that's gonna be awesome. But by the time that this news comes out, it'll be <laughs> too late. So, you know what? Save that cash for, um, Sea Ponycon. <laughs> yes, yeah, save it for Sea or for next year and cross your fingers and hope they put this deal up again. Oh yeah, I mean, I hope they do it because it seems like a smart idea. Oh yeah, definitely. I know a lot of people down here would jump on it if I had this news earlier. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But, fun fact, one plush is about $27. So if you times that by two, you probably get about $54 for two. And them cutting the price down to 35 it's not bad. Saving almost $20. Mm-hmm. Almost. Still, that is cool, that is cool. And we're coming to the, well, almost the end. But, you know, we mentioned before, like, everybody's hype about this one. And... This news here, or this thing that we're going to talk about, won't come out until, well, um, approximately 237 days, 13 hours, and 3 minutes. And what I'm talking about is the My Little Pony movie. Oh, I can't wait for this. I really can't. It's going to be awesome. Yep. And we've been reporting on this one for a while now. We've been talking about the stars that's going to be on, the director and whatnot, and the release date, and all that stuff. But one thing that we haven't been introduced or given is the characters. Character portraits of the thing that we're being introduced to, like the Storm King or whatsoever. And, well, we've got an update. And it seems that Hasbro has push out posters or character thingies. I don't know what they're going to call this one because it's very strange. It's a mugshot of the voice actor with a bit of art of the character they're voicing. I guess it's a double mugshot. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go with that one. So uh, we start off with Levi Shaber? 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 Shaber. I think that's how you say his name. He's the guy that played um, X-Men Origins Wolverine. Uh, he played Sabretooth. Ah, yeah, I was wondering why he looked familiar. I didn't realize that. I was like, this guy looks so similar yeah. to someone I've seen before. Yeah, that's his most, mo- to me, his most popular role because I watched that movie and yeah. So anyway, um, he'll be playing the Storm King and his character looks not similar to T-Rex, but almost it's definitely a centaur. It definitely looks like a centaur. I don't know. It, I don't know. It's, it's got Tyrick's arms and sort of like upper body shape and similar face. Mm. So I, I'm expecting it to be a centaur or something close to it. Mm. Because not all the centaurs look alike. 
because Scorpan doesn't look anything like a centaur, and he's meant to be T-Rex brother. Yeah, because if you read the comics, uh, his mother was a different thing. I don't know. To me, uh, he could be uh, what you might call this, Sylvian, something like that. Probably, I, I don't know. But still, the character looks mean, and Levy here says that he, whenever he lands a role, he always gets a villain. And when he tries his hand in something animated. He got a villain. So, yeah. <laughs> Good luck, man. Poor guy. Yep. I guess he's just made to be a bad man. Yep. Well, that's not that bad. I mean, uh, if he does the role right, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. If he does a great job, then that's brilliant. Yep, yep. And the funny thing is, uh, he posted this on his personal Twitter. So, yay, that's cool. <laughs> oh, nice. I didn't realize that. I don't follow them on Twitter. Yeah, see here. I'm just clicking on links. <laughs> All of the links. Yep. And next up on the list is Christine Kensworth. She'll be playing Princess Skystar. So, is there anything off with her? Uh, you, you mean aside from the, the really light flowing mane, the, the, the wing-like ears, and the insect like wings from what we can see no i think she looks perfectly normal yeah but you know there's a certain song from the 80s that really speaks out to me right now hmm oh, oh i know the song you're talking about a few a few people down here quite enjoy this song hmm do you know how that song Keeps goes me awake at night <laughs> I, I all i remember is a shoop and a doop yeah, now, yeah, now I remember it's shooby doop doop doopy doop. <laughs> it's a sea pony. What the? Yeah, I didn't realize that until just now. I've been looking at uh, these pictures for the last few days, and I was like, she doesn't look like a regular pony. I, I'm not quite sure what she is. The fact that it looks like it has wings threw me off. But now looking at the larger image of it and seeing the the, the hooves and how the mane actually looks. Yeah, it has to be a sea pony. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they're going to call it, but if you read one of the children's books, Rainbow Dash and something, 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 uh, I, I do remember that they did mention the existence of sea ponies. So this would be uh, mentioned in the animated version. So that's cool. Yeah, I, I do recall that they said that there were going to be sea ponies in the movie, I think, quite a while back. That's cool. I just have to say, like, awesome uh what can i say more i don't know like i need to wait and see her full role um if you got no idea who christine kensworth is she did a few roles in her lifetime um some of them being uh, television shows like bojack horseman the muppet movie the peanuts movie uh, and then you got the boy next door and so on Oh, she also played a role in Rio. Uh, she played the character Gibby. I think that's Rio too. But anywho, um, that's what she did. So yay, uh, that's cool. And I also think she posted this on her Twitter. Yeah, she did. Uh, yeah, I think she was the... F no, no, she wasn't the first, but she was like the second person I saw. Ah, and up next we got Tay Diggs. Yes, as Caper. This is actually, I think I'm more, most interested in seeing his character in the movie. Yeah. It's the most out of, far, far out character I've seen them pull out so far. Yeah. This is, how, hmm, how do I explain how many things that are so, well, things are baffling in my head right now. First thing, this character, or his character, is a feline character. It's a cat. Uh, how, what's the word I'm looking for? Kajit. <laughs> yeah, that, that's one way to uh, word it. No, that's one way. So, some gaming nerds will understand. Yeah. I, I think anthropomorphic, yes, is an anthropomorphic cat. You have to remember that cat do exist in Equestria. Opalescence is for one. So we got this anthropomorphic character uh named caper i have to say the design's really cool but what what are you 
It's very, very strange because very few species we've seen so far aren't uh, quadrupeds. Yeah. Ba- basically, everything, uh, the closest we've seen to creatures having hands has been Minotaur. T-Rex. Mm-hmm. T-Rex. Minotaur. Yeah, the, min- the Minotaur is the closest to a human that we've had. And then we've also had, well, Dis- they're claws, but the griffins can grasp things. True. Discord and one Discord. More. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but aside from the Minotaurs, this is probably the, the most humanish character we've gotten so far. True. And his characteristic here, like, hmm, he looks like a scoundrel. Oh, yeah, he's got that swashbuckler sort of vibe about him with the jacket. I quite like that jacket. Yep. I want, yep. my, want myself one of those. Yep. And he's been playing roles in NCIS, Rosewood, The New Girl, Between Us, The Daily Show. He was part of The Daily Show? Nice. And a few shows. Grace Anatomy. Huh. Dr. Sam Bennett. Cool. And we go on to Emily Blunt. And she plays ah, yes. Tempest Shadow. Tempest Shadow is very, very agile design. But the one thing I find interesting is her horn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, I do suggest that you go onto the show notes and click on the show notes to check out what we're talking about. There's pictures and whatnot. And yeah. Tempest Shadow's horn is broken. So this is going to be one of those things where she's going to be a very angry, angry pony. We assume, anyway. The, the, the art, she looks quite happy. Well, she's in for promotion. Like, you know, promotional pictures. Sure, you, <laughs> you don't want the, a possible good guy looking angry and mean in promotional art. Yeah, you know, like, hey, I'm doing something. So, yay. So... I'm very interested to see how magic works, if at all, with the horn like that. Yeah. Like, I can predict her character, like, just my prediction for this character would be she can't use magic because her horn is broken and she's really angry. And by her characteristics, she has a scar on her left eye. So that's going to be symbolizing that she's been through rough times. Uh, she could be one of the generals for the Storm King, possibly, because of her armor. True. Very true. So, uh, Emily Blunt, uh, do you know what she played in? Yes. She was in a movie called Empire, uh, Gideon's Daughter, Curiosity. She was in the Simpsons movie. <laughs> or an episode, I forget. Saturday Night Live. No, that's television. What am I looking at? Uh, still same thing. Like, as long as uh, she's there. I think she also plays The Devil Wears Prada. Uh, my sister's sister. She was in the 2011 Muppets movie. She was in Looper, Edge of Tomorrow. Oh, that's a lot. She played a lot. And she's one of yeah. those uh, well-known actresses. Yeah, Into the Woods, The Huntsman, Winter's War, The Girl on the Train, Animal Crackers. No, that's one that's coming out this year. Still, um, there is a lot. Yeah, The Devil Wears Prada is the second movie she was ever in. Oh, wow. Going to Wikipedia or anyway. Cool, cool. And, well, we move on to the next person on the list. Well, <laughs> I'm surprised and I, I don't know what to think about this one because Zoe Zaldana, Saldana. For you guys who don't know who this character is, I'm sure you've seen her before, but you got no idea who she is because most of her acting role involves her covering her face with makeup. Really, really heavy makeup. Not the kind of makeup that, you know, to make you look pretty. This is covering her skin to look another color. And what I'm talking about here is she plays Gamora in Guardians of the Galaxy. She plays Natiri in Avatar. Um, let me, uh, that James Cameron's Avatar. And well, if you want to see her not wearing any makeup, she was in Star Trek Into Darkness. Well, the Star Trek reboot movie, uh, Playing Uhura. Neota Uhura. Mm-hmm. Damn, that's a pain in the ass to say. <laughs> yeah. But she's been in other movies too. But all of them are awesome. All of them are awesome. And she plays, uh, well, what I'm assuming a Griffin character? 
Yeah, everyone I've seen has assumed it's a griffin because it's got a griffin's head and claws, but the artwork depicts it standing more upright, which is really weird. One of the things for this character screen here is the picture is a bit small. Even if you go to the source picture, it's on uh, Zoe Saldana's page. But problem is, the image here is small too, so... It's quite small. Yeah, so it's really hard to tell. Promotion for ants. <laughs> yeah, uh, but you know, I'm starting to be afraid right now. Why is that? Because from what we got, the character, the cat character was um, Caper. Caper, was it? Yeah, Caper. Yeah, his characteristics not in the world of Equestria. You know what I mean? He's more of the um, other cartoon series. Like, uh, for example, Cats Can Dance or even... I, I I go far as say Zootopia kind of feel. Yeah. yeah, anything remotely humanoid seems out of place in Equestria after so long. Yeah, and with how Equestria does the show, I, I don't know. Here's here's the thing: like Capper here could be one of those Kadash characters. Okay, I I can understand that. Like, yeah, they're a race. Yeah, but Captain. Kalieno? Cal- Kalieno? Cap- yeah, Kalieno. Kalieno. Yeah, Kalieno. I think that's how you say it. So her character doesn't really look like a griffin. So that's what worries me right about now. It'd be very interesting to see when it comes out. I do like the uh, he- head, the way the feathers on her head are arranged, though, which is another uh, thing that makes her look less like her standard griffin. Because the standard griffins we've seen have very small feathers on their head. And she's got several quite large ones. They give her a sort of a ponytail feel. She kind of looks a bit like a pirate. And that looks cool. I, I don't mind it. I, I just can't wait to see where they bring this concept to the movie. And last but not least, uh, Uzo Abuda. Aduba. Aduba. Yeah, Uzo Aduba. Aduba, yeah. And she plays Queen Novo. And what can I say about this character? Uh, well, one thing for sure is she posted this on her Twitter, so that's awesome. And like I said, what can we say about this character? She's a queen. I think this is the first time that a uh, queen is mentioned in the show. Is it? Uh, second time, because Queen Chrysalis. This is the first one. Also, she's a sea pony. Uh, at least she has a very similar design to... The princess we mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming she's also a sea pony and maybe the mother? Well, I'm assuming that too because if she's queen and that's the princess, so it makes perfect logical sense. Yes. So yeah, sea pony queen, that's cool. Um, her roles have been uh, Orange is the New Black, Steven Universe, really now. <laughs> cool. Oh, she was Bismuth. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty. That's pretty uh, good. Bismuth. Like, who is Bismuth? I- I'm trying to remember. A crystal gem that appears in a two-part episode. Ah. And then it gets poofed. Oh, yeah. Um, The best description I can say is she has rainbow dreadlocks and a square... I want j- Gem? Would you say gem? Square gem on her chest? Yeah, her, 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 her gem is... Like... Well, Bismuth. Square, I- can't really this because it's sort of inverted it's yeah. weird it looks like it's hollow well it's technically a bismuth that's, that's what it is <laughs> yeah a very odd gem at least the way that it's depicted in the show is very strange oh yeah but still um she played that and that's cool um i think she's been only doing tv series for her career now so that's been pretty cool. And jumping to a animated movie right out of the gate, that's going to be cool. She's proven herself. She was for... in a couple movies. She was a t- uh, she was a I think it's just a side character in the third Alvin and the Chipmunks movie. Uh... But she's only been doing movies since 2015. Yeah, she's a new kid on the block, but she's doing well. And Orange is the New Black is pretty popular from what I heard. Oh yeah, I've heard it's pretty popular. So, cool. And that's the star-studded lineup that we got. 
Except for one guy. Oh, oh yes, yeah, so I've been told there's one guy who has yet to be announced. Who? I don't know. I've been just people keep saying that there is one guy that hasn't been announced yet. It's getting to me. I want to know. Do you know the guy? Do you know the guy? I I know. No idea. Michael Do Pena. You? Ooh. And if you don't know idea who that is, he's the guy who played the Hispanic guy in Ant Man. Remember the guy who tells the flashback story? Oh yes. Him. Ah, oh, he was funny in that movie. Yeah. If he's I, I look forward to him being in this movie quite a lot now. Yeah. And let's see what they do because uh, I'm double checking the IMDB for the MLP movie. And let's see. I, I know they haven't announced Michael Penna yet. And let's see what else, what else. Um, alright, there's a few here that they haven't mentioned. Michael Penna's being one of them and Sia. Um, Sia is that pop singer. Just Sia. Uh, I believe she was announced quite a while ago actually. She's meant to be the Queen of Hippos character. I do. And a, and a possible design was uh, uploaded like over a year ago. I don't know if that's true. The one uh, concept art that you saw, like it's just a pony with black and white mane or something like that. That was her OC yes. or her representation as a pony. But her character in the show uh, hasn't been revealed yet. And her name here is Songbird Surrender. Uh, seren- Serenade. Yeah, Songbird Serenade. So, for now, with how the bird character is going on, she could be a bird. True. Uh, I, I believe some people are taking the the artwork that was uh, shown when they announced that she was going to be in the movie as her character, but we'll see if it turns out to be true. Yeah, we'll see. And Michael Penna here hasn't been given a... Well, his role has not been revealed yet. He just voices a character. So we'll have to see. We'll have to wait and see. So uh, out of the full list, only Sia and Michael has not been revealed. Um, More news for the future. So uh, speculation time. What do you think of this? Like with the info we gotten, what's your expectation for this movie? I think this movie is going to go way off to the side of what we expect. Mm-hmm. I I know I definitely wasn't expecting there to be an anthropomorphized cat, a, possibly a new version of Griffins. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, the, the sea pony stuff was alluded to and I think confirmed a while back, but the Storm King I was not expecting either. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's very, very interesting that we've got some of these character designs come out. I, I'm going to have to revamp all of my expectations now. Yeah, and to note, most of the characters here are done in Toon Boom. So... Uh, that's going to be something new. Previously, the show has been running on, uh, what you might call this, Flash. So, running on Toon Boom now, they should be really interesting. So, a good example of good animation with Toon Boom, done by amateurs, is the dual cartoonist video called The Moon Rises. That was done in Toon Boom. So, if, a two-man crew could do this in Toon Boom. Could you just imagine how big of a quality a bunch of people in the movie industry could do? Oh, yeah. It's going to be impressive. I'm really looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. They, they keep upping... No, I'm not sure about between season five and six, but looking back on season one two and looking at the new seasons... There's a definite increase in the quality of the animation. And now it's definitely going to jump up again. Oh, yeah. And I wonder if they're going to carry that over in Season 7. I would not be surprised. Uh, if they've been using it and working on the movie with it for all this time, I would not be surprised at all if Season 7 comes out in Toon Boom. Mm-hmm. True that. And as my expectation for this movie, I need to kind of put it on a... What's the word I'm looking for? Um, be cautious about it? 
because I don't go over hype for this movie because singles in my brain are flagging right now. Like I should be hampering my expectations for this movie because I got no idea what to expect. But from what I can tell that when this movie comes out, my prediction is that people are going to be split down the middle from people who love this movie to people who hate this movie. Oh yeah, I know some people who have already decided that they absolutely hate the movie. But there are also people that are sort of not so much into the ponies anymore. Yeah, yeah, it's a choice. But as for me right now, the single of Caper and Captain, who her name now is, uh, Selen, uh, Selenia? Seleno, Seleno. Selenia, Sel- uh, something like that, Selenio. Selenio. Uh, we'll figure it out <laughs> when they release the movie and yeah. we all can hear a proper pronunciation. <laughs> yeah. So, like, uh, Caper and the Captain here, those are the two um, flag are raising kind of characters because they're out of the norm. So you have to be worried. Like for me, I'm a bit worried. Like, oh, don't tell me that they're going to jump into another universe. They did mention that they're going to another world, right? I don't know about another world. I remember there was some talk about transforming, but as far as I'm aware, it's more of traveling across the planet. Mm, okay, I'm I'm on the IMDb page and. When a dark force threatens Ponyville and the main six, they go on a journey to the end of Equestria to save their beloved home and they meet new friends and dangerous challenge along the way. Well, doesn't say anything to another alternate universe, so mm, who knows. I'm hoping we get a lot of world building out of this, though. True, true. But let's see. Uh, well, that's the news for this week. Movie news we have talked about. Other than that, I am scared for the future. That that movie is... Oh, I just can't wait. I, I, I just want to watch it now, man. I'm excited for it. I can't wait to see the movie. I can't wait for season 7. Disappointed that I can't try a Rainbow Dash burger. Uh, I, I think it's just the no, bun. I can't wait. Yeah, but still, th- this is... Awesome news. And still we have two other characters that are yet to be revealed, so that's in the future. So if we can catch those two characters in the future, we'll probably get a nice guesstimate of what they're doing. But for now, uh, we only get this, and still this is pretty much enough. So episode 205 is a bit lacking in the, well, personal feel. Is So why don't we add our touches on the personal feels? One thing that I want to try and bring along for every episode is things that we've been watching or things that have been entertaining us. And as for me, things that have been entertaining me has been this one movie called John Wick. The only reason why I'm mentioning this now over here is because I might be going to watch John Wick too. And why am I so excited about John Wick? Because he's a playable character in one of my favorite games, PD2. So, yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, I, I can't wait till I get paid this week. I want that new DLC. <laughs> yeah, and the DLC game too. It's not bad. Like, the stealth mission is really, really sneaky. But that's besides the point. Um, The point of the matter is, John Wick, the first movie, was really entertaining. So that's what's been entertaining me for this week. Um, Twy, what about you, man? What has been entertaining you this week? Uh, mostly Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, even though it's like two, two, three years old now, I haven't watched it until this week. Mm-hmm. I actually, because my net was down early today, I marathoned the second half of the series in one shot. <laughs> and each episode's like 40 minutes long. Wow. So you can imagine how long that took. How How is Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Like, I heard that Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. was kind of slow at the beginning, but it ramps up near the end or something uh, like that. Yeah, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit slow at points, especially towards the beginning. But when it when it ramps up, it really, really ramps up. Does it connect? I'm pretty excited to watch season two. Does it connect to the Marvel Universe, the movies? Uh, yes. Oh. Yes, it's set in the same universe, uh, right alongside... 
all those Netflix series that are coming out, they're also set in the same universe. Oh. Because it's all ramping up to the uh, Infinity Wars. Ooh. Because, yeah, you, you need a lot of heroes and villains around established for the Infinity Wars, uh, judging from what the comic book event for that was. Any example of what matched up in the movie and Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Season 1 is set after the original Avengers movie. And the end of Season 1, the last few episodes deal with uh, the second Captain America movie where Hydra pops out and is like, we're inside S.H.I.E.L.D. and start wrecking stuff. Because it shows the characters from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. dealing with the Hydra uprising in a different area to the movie. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And it's got everyone's favorite agent, Agent Coulson. How did he survive? Oh, you'll find out if you watch the series. It's actually really interesting. Interesting and convoluted or really interesting? <laughs> Just really interesting. All right, all right. Pretty standard, uh, this, you know, comic book, sci-fi stuff, but it's really interesting uh, considering that it's set in the cinematic universe and there's a lot of stuff they have yet to touch on in that uh, series. All right, so you're going to feel, okay, I've heard a lot of good things about it. Probably I'll try and check it out when I can. So that's what will be entertaining us. For me, it's John Wick. For Twy here, it's Agent of Shields. And, well, uh, if you've got your own recommendation to tell us, uh, do put it down in the comments. I'll be reading it and I'll be, well, checking it out if possible. Hmm, who knows? So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS Show. And as for me, I am at Norman Sanzo. And Twy, where can the people find you, man? Uh, as per last time, my com- convoluted excessive amount of social networks. There is the at midnight underscore pint on Twitter, a double pint productions on Facebook, two pints please on YouTube, and Twilight Genesis over on Fin Fiction and DeviantArt. Convoluted indeed. <laughs> Links will be in the show notes for you to easily click to them. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube and Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on com. And also do subscribe to our newest endeavor, the MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there you get me, Silver Quill, and a Sapphire Heart song talking about the MLP cartoon, movies, and even comic books. And sometimes we like to do discussions. Like the, well, like recently we did a talk about Princess Cadence, and previously we did one about movies. And well, if all things go according to plan, uh, we might have Twy here again, myself, and probably Silver, talking about that one really awesome Kung Fu movie called Kung Pao, Enter the Fist. Ah, I can't wait to do that. It's going to be a great excuse to watch that movie again. Yep, that's true, that's true. Rewatching that movie is just fun. It's one of those bad, good movies. Ah, very, very quotable, very quotable. (laughs) Yes, yes, call me Betty. My nipples look like milk duds. Oh, God. Uh, that movie is just so much fun. Oh, I'm sad it never got a sequel. Yeah. <laughs> it, it had a cliffhanger that was really cliffy. <laughs> oh, it was sequel bait to no end. <laughs> indeed, indeed. You can also support us at patreon.com slash the MBS show. Over there, you can uh, support us with a dollar. That will give you a really good shout out on the show. And also, well, some surprises. Like previously, I released an unreleased episode. Five dollars will, well, if you have a topic for us, you can share it over there. Um, only one slot per person is for now. But when that goes, um, when that becomes popular, we'll probably open it up. So, that's the Patreon. And well, as a Patreon promise, I would like to thank some people here. And I would like to thank you, Twy, for 
supporting me on the Patreon. Thank you, man. No problem. Anytime. And also to another friend of mine, Durka Cat. Thank you for, well, supporting the show. You've been awesome. And well, if you would like to have me say your name here, well, Patreon's there. Please do. Give him money, damn it. <laughs> Uh, yes, that is also true. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I've been Twilight Genesis. And we'll guys catch you next week with another amazing, fun, and 5th year anniversary show. See ya! Bye!